but then you put the clothes back on and then they burrow into you to lay their That's eggs. smart, that is. And then they just start hatching under your skin and then oh. they eat their way out. I've got a lot of respect for that. Welcome back, everybody, to Hard Skeezer Podcast, episode number two. Woo. Thanks for having us. We're, we're, we're yeah, making man. big moves in this world right Absolutely. now. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be good to intro the boys. These two boys, Stan and Harry, coming with me the entire way for Project Africa. Make Support a crew. Um, we've got a lot of questions from, from you lot, so we're going to be answering them later in the pod. But I thought we'd start off with just a, a little intro to both of the boys. Nice. So, Harry, big man. Lovely. Uh, Lovely. South West London. South West London, uh, born and bred, uh, sometimes unfortunately. Um, yeah, 23 years old, although I look 33. It's all right, you can tell me below. Um, we, yeah. we, I've been telling Harry that we need to, that he should go bald because it will look hard. I'm thinking day one Tunisia. Yeah, I'm thinking we get on the boat and then as we get off the boat, you're gonna. Well, shake I was off. I was gonna say to you, man, why don't we run a poll for the audience? I think we should. We'll run it. <laughs> we'll run it. <laughs> oh, can, I, can I be honest with you? I think we already know the results of the poll. <laughs> so listen, I'm saying, listen, let's do it. Let's. I've been contemplating it for a while, so I think yeah, day one Tunisia, mate. Yeah. Mark it out. You know, this is the start of my bald life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, with you mate. boys take the leap of faith that's it mate well Ad- Africa is a, a leap of faith isn't it, it, it let's really, be honest really like, we're all diving into the unknown you're the only one who's done something a bit like this in the yeah. age of the London run yeah I mean you, mate you've done a lot of travelling I like, tell the people you've been fucking <sighs> all over the gaff we've been all over the gaff we've done 26 countries um, and we did the stands when with stand not with stand <laughs> maybe next time maybe so the stands so by the stand. stands he means like Kazakhstan Turkmenistan yeah, yeah. Tajikistan Afghanistan, Afghanistan Uzbekistan. Ones, you know? Didn't make it to Pakistan and we didn't make it to Turkmenistan, unfortunately. They, they didn't want to give me the visa. But yeah, we went and we did um, sort of five and a bit months traveling around Asia. Uh, and then we did a bit of Southeast Asia as well, a little bit nice. of China. Nice. Not a lot of China. Um, so not Africa, but kind of, you know, it's transferable skills. There are transferable skills. It's a bit sketchy, some of the places that we went to. But. Um, yeah, I think we were a bit lucky. We went with a lass who could who could speak a bit of Russian. Yeah. And so now I'm that was handy. trying now to you're fulfill the, that role. You're the language guru here. Oh, Harry mate. speaks Spanish and recently French as well. In the last month, um, ladies and gentlemen. So which, yeah, mate, a big graph. He's like he's like the whole language oh, mate, in the last like, like, three what is it, months. Three hours a day you've been doing. I was doing five. Now it's about like two. To be oh, yeah. I've got to step it up. Yeah. We heard you on on your French lesson last night. Me and Sam were just like. It's so actually kind of just both just fucking spouting around different languages. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty. Sick, you mate. speak Spanish as well already. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So I lived in lived in Mexico for a year. Uh, Mrs. is Mexican uh, in a tiny little town Mexico. where they don't speak a lot of English. To be honest with you. But yeah, mate. I think French. Obviously, the reason Harry's learning French is because throughout a decent section of this trip, probably about half, they're they're French speaking. Ten, 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 ten of them. Ten of the yeah, countries. Ten of the countries. Ten out of sixteen. So um, we needed someone really, ideally, to, to um, speak French, and Harry's taken it, uh, taken it upon himself yeah. to uh, to put that work in. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's good stuff. Je peux parler français sans problème. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I say I say without a problem, <laughs> with some problem, <laughs> some problem. Uh, it's better than mine, anyway. Um, yeah, that's it, mate. That's a good rundown, Harry. We'll, we'll get to know everyone more in depth. Obviously, more. mate, we got eight months to fucking get to know these guys. So. Um, Stan, Stan big man, what are you saying? Well, yeah, I've been brought in because I know the YouTube scene. He knows well. the YouTube game. Um, I've been a film freelance filmmaker for like the last seven or eight years. Recently, in the last few years, moved into the YouTube sphere. Started off with the the amazing Zach or Salt Big Up. Yeah, um, Zach. So I edit for him quite a bit, and I've also doubled with Beta Squads, Max Fosh, um, and then most recently, and this is how I met Russ for the first time working on Dribbling Britain with yes. Tom Davies, Geo is in, where we ran, well, me and Russ ran, and yeah. Tom dribbled the football, the length, uh, the width of Britain in 24 hours. Yeah, well, mate, so, so gigantic names and big challenges there. Stan's going to sell He's in the right court, place. Right? But the first time I met him, he, he, we, was, we was running, we were doing the Dribbling Britain, and, um, and I think the furthest you'd run before was like 10k or something. So it wasn't yeah, much yeah, it was, about about that kind of distance. Yeah. Like I've done big distances hiking, but I'm not a runner. Yeah. Really and me. then so we're doing this dribble in Britain, and Stan with a camera and a gimbal in hand runs 100k in that 24 hour period. And uh, from that moment, That's I was mental. like, this, 
this lad's got some fucking coke on him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But to be fair, there's two ways you can look at that. You can look at that as impressive because I just ran 100k having only done 10, or you can look at it as if, like, he's done no training. For <laughs> 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 but, mate, I think it's, it's good because there's going to be plenty of moments in Africa where yeah. we're like, we ain't done the training for this. Yeah, well, you, you have to You just adapt fucking and adapt and overcome, yeah. innit? And, um, adapt and, and overcome. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's what it's all about, really, innit? So, yeah. Um, these are, the, these are the two of the crew. Uh, the last one, we've got Olivia. Yeah. She's um, our, uh, our, our token American for the trip. <laughs> token American. Um, yeah, classic Americans arriving late to the party. <laughs> but, but somehow still the most prepared. Most intelligent, yeah. most prepared. <laughs> um, Lived in Africa yeah, as well. Yeah, she, yeah she's literally spent um, almost a year in Ghana. Yeah. Um, she's... she's Handy with a camera too, so yeah. So she's stuck in she's stuck in Washington at the minute, sorting visas because obviously a whole different rules for for American citizens. But she'll be with us hopefully for the next part, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll get we'll get a good intro for Olivia. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a meet the team, I guess, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. um, the recruitment process was a bit different for everyone because obviously Harry was living in Mexico and um, Olivia obviously in in America. But Stan did get brutalised a bit because um, <laughs> yeah, I heard about this stuff. as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm so kind of glad I missed that part had, of selection. Yeah, Do you I want had to tell this. Yeah, as well? you tell it actually. Yeah. Mate. You tell it from your. I mean, I'd be interested to, to hear your reaction to this because I think you just made it up as you went along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we rock it. Me you're making stuff up as I go. Oh, never. You've been it. found out. I've never done that ever before. I don't know what you're just talking about. So we rock up in there's about five of us I think. Yeah. Um who made it through the interview stage. We rock up in Worthing. Um, Big up Worthing. Six PM. <laughs> Where do we go? The pub immediately, like proper old geezer pub. Yeah. Um He's the hardest geezer, I mean. Yeah. yeah. You know. Russ buys everyone a pint. We <laughs> sit down. <laughs> with him and the producer, Josh, um, and then they just start grilling us on personal life, all of that. You know, fucking Russ is like, oh, that's so fucking, like, <laughs> some geezers rock up with AK-47 pointing at your head telling them what are you gear, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, it's not your average interview question. And yeah. About 9 p.m., he's got us relaxed, he's got us a bit tipsy. Lulled them into a false sense of security. Yeah. I didn't fall for it though, I know. <laughs> yeah, and then he, Bundles us into a van, drives for about an hour, just into the middle of nowhere, down south, um, drops us off, he's like, right, see you in the morning, make a video out of it, um, here's your tent, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we ended up in a cow field, like, just dodging cow pats, um, with the intention, we did get a video done in the end, to be fair, yeah. I ended up, yeah. I ended up uh, sneaking into a Best Western lobby at about four in the morning to edit that wi-fi yeah yeah <laughs> get that wi-fi so we've done wifi. plenty of that in africa and then they rock up uh, we're all knackered obviously we've had about three hours sleep and then russ takes us to the world famous worthy running, worthy track. running track um you know right two hours don't stop running off and go yeah yeah Ooh. so i thought we put the boys through their paces got really? no sleep none really? of them are runners and she went fuck off I ran it for two hours. Yeah, um, yeah. You were all pretty fucked at the end of that. To be yeah. fair, but it was it was good. It was good. Good day. Um, and and to be fair, all the other boys were good yeah, stuff. Yeah, they did amazing. And um, you know they they may well end up coming out for parts of this trip. So we yeah, sure. we'll wait and see. Um, how are both of you feeling about the trip? I'm excited, mate. Yeah, I'm really excited. To be honest with you, this is like a dream come true. This is everything I've done in my life has sort of push me in this direction and to be given this opportunity is an honour and a privilege oh, and man, I'm no. gassed about it to be yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gassed about it it's going to be things. it's going to be great yeah. um, what are you what are you most nervous about do you reckon uh, oh, I've been to some sketchy places but I'm going to be honest with you some of the slightly more central African nations are I think what I've always found is a lot of people and I think we've even found this ourselves in in, um, in some of the meetings we've had and stuff it's like a lot of people want to book you out about a place mm -hmm. and go like, oh, these, you know, you can't go there, it's too dangerous, blah, blah, blah. But when you get there, on the whole, 95% of the time, you know, people are actually just good Nice. Yeah. The majority of sure. people They're around the world up. are nice. And, and the professionals who aren't here with us, who right. are pulling strings in the background, yeah. they've got to err on the side of caution. Yeah, they have to. Because yeah. if it was left up to you, mate, 
We'd be. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be no, sec- <laughs> no idea of security. Yeah, uh, yeah, potentially. What about you, Stan? How are you? How are you feeling, mate? Mate, I'm just, I'm just excited to get on the road now. It's been, yeah. it's been such a, like you know, we haven't really documented it, but it's been an insane arduous process oh, to get you at this point. So Six months plus. Itching for it, man. Yeah. Itching when was now. it like? September. August, so yeah, maybe August, September. August, September. You know, it's been it's been a lot of planning. Um, I'm sure some of you already know that we've been delayed for logistical reasons. And mm. Still plenty to do. We're yeah. getting there. But yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. the end is in sight. So once that's all done, yeah, it's going to be just a relief, I think, to oh, finally man. be out there. We've been dreaming of it for so long. I know to get that to just actually be on the start line in Tunisia yeah. with a few visas in hand. Yeah, um, will be will be such a touch. Such what, what are you? What are you most worried about? To be honest, it's tricky to know because we can we can sort of focus on some of the danger points that we're aware of. Yeah. I think what challenges the most is the stuff that we we aren't aware of now. So it's tricky to say. I th- I think there will be situations. Oh no, that's that's a lie. Actually, I know exactly what I'm most worried yeah, about. Yeah, go on. The I'm minefield. Not, I'm not massive. Not the minefield. The minefield. I'm not worried about. <laughs> not the mine. Not the minefield, guys. So he's not worried about the minefield. You know where the minefield is, so we just won't drive on it. I reckon yeah. I could make it with one leg. I rang up a bit. <laughs> sort of. yeah. Well, you can you can take the shortcut and we'll go around. I rang up a, a friend who who's worked in Kenya most of her life, um, and all she, she, she was going to give me advice, but all she really talked about was parasites. I'm not yeah, this is a big thing. Yeah, in parts, in parts of the rainforest, I don't know if I've told you this yet, but in parts of the rainforest there are these um, flies called mango flies. I've heard about the mango yeah, flies. They, yeah, they, if you leave your clothes out to dry, you're just in the open air. Yeah. They burrow into your clothes um, to lay their eggs, but then you put the clothes back on and then they burrow into you to lay their That's eggs. That's smart, that is. And then they just start hatching under your skin. And oh. then they eat their way out. I've got a lot of respect for that. Yeah, no, they too. It's they've hustled their way. They've certainly they hustled into to, the, the, you know, know, the prime survival of the fittest. Of Fair play. Jackie mentioned it a few times, and, and it's like avoid bodies of water mm. because that's where the mosquitoes are at. That's where a lot of the. Whenever there's stagnant water, you can guarantee yeah, that some nasty that things. Way. Yeah, or a hippo. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's, it's funny because um, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, fantasizing over the scrap of the lion or the, the fucking wrestling the hippo and all this shit. But it, you're not you know, wrestling really and <laughs> if, you were, if you were assessing percentage of risk and stuff, then it's right down. It's the mosquitoes are the most dangerous. Yeah. The little parasites and the disease and the illness is what's going to do us in probably more than a, than a lion. We're all vaccinated, right? So it's like illnesses. I think, we, OK, everyone is going to get sick once. But parasites, yeah. you, there's no vaccination against that. Yeah, you cannot yeah, take a needle in the it. arm and. Man, I tell you what, though, I back my immune system fucking solid as a rock, mate. Yeah, uh, your immune system's not, not good right now. <laughs> I back it. I don't think your immune system's got anything to do with parasites, though. Unfortunately, no, they, I don't know, mate. Living like, creatures. They're they're literally, just, that's not. It's not an illness. Yeah, but it's maybe. They just touch the hardest geese of blood, and they're like, no, not messing with that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, <laughs> he's the kryptonite of all the parasites. The other stuff I'm worried about is. We're not worried, but you know, it's it's areas of concern are certain logistical points, especially in the Sahara Desert. Mm-hmm. There is the biggest problem point of the whole trip is the Mar- Algeria Mauritania border, which I don't yeah. think we've actually spoken about on camera before. It's cool. I don't know if I have. I mean, we fuck me, we've spoken about it a lot amongst yeah. ourselves. We spent yeah. hours talking about this one it's, border. It's insane. It's a border that's only been open for the last two years. Um, it's still technically not open to tourists, but Westerners have crossed it. Yeah, um, there's a few people that have done it, so that's good enough yeah. for me. My Basically, friends in Algeria say it's open, but yeah. we'll find out. The, in Algeria, there's an 800 kilometer stretch of roads that runs from... It's not really road, is it? Well, it, it, there, it's road in Algeria. 800 kilometers of road where technically we're meant to have a military escort oh, so right, we're going to yeah, have to fuck. really blag our way out of that yeah. otherwise you can't run it um, so that's the most the biggest logistical challenge followed by the hardest border followed by if you look on google maps i'll, I'll overlay it um you can have a concrete road at the border and then it she just so. ends in a car, <laughs> car park yeah, yeah. and there is no road for another 800 kilometers yeah one not to mention you're in the middle of the sahara desert it's 30 plus degrees there's no rain or su- anywhere to restock supplies yeah, we're going to need a there's, lot there's of water one, yeah, yeah. there's one military base in the middle where you can get fuel and that's it yeah and if they decide to be closed fucking hey boys 
So I'll buzz basically, with that. <sighs> tear up in the Sahara. So Come basically, on. you've got. 800 kilometers of the most logistically difficult terrain, followed by the hardest border to cross in the whole of Africa uh, that we're doing. Just to get started. Followed by 800 <laughs> kilometers of pure desert with no road, which is the area where with we the are going the minefields. Yeah, yeah, there's no road. <laughs> there's no road <laughs> next to the minefield. Yeah, it's just a right. track. So. I'll back it though. I still reckon we've got that, no problem. One leg, no yeah. stress. But yeah, should we jump into some questions that people- Yeah, let's do it. That people uh, it. sent over. Let's have a look. James Allen asks, which section slash stretch are you most looking forward to and least looking forward to? And what's keeping you motivated in the lead up to this? And what will be your motivation throughout? Love what you're doing. Can't wait to follow the journey. Nice. 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 Cheers, Cheers James. Mr. Allen. Um, what section stretch am I looking forward to most? I'm, 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 I am looking forward to the Congo. I think it's gonna, I think it's going to be probably the hardest this man is a psychopath yeah, um, <laughs> um so i think I, I, and i just think there's going to be problems left right center yeah and mind just be wet. once we're through that it's so you know once we're through the congo it's like yeah we've done the sahara we've done the congo it's going to be the most amazing we can do anything world, yeah yeah just just the the namib desert one of the most isolated deserts in the world left by the way yeah but that is yeah. the section i'm most looking forward to me too actually. yeah it's gonna yeah. The nice thing about, the only nice thing about the route, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all relative, is that we do get some of the most logistical challenges out of the way early, apart from yeah. the Congo. So once we pass the Congo, we won't be able to relax. It's still going to be arduous and tense. Yeah. For you, it'll be the worst bit. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Running through that mud and water. And oh, like, mate, you're yeah, going to be wet yeah. for literally a month. And yeah. The Namibian yeah. desert is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I just can't wait. That will be nice. Is that, is that nice your, that's your I think highlight? That's my highlight, okay. honestly. For me, it's like uh, family on my mum's side. It's from South Africa. Um, and I've never been. I've heard a thousand stories. And I just can't wait. It's kind of like, it feels a little bit like the motherland that I've, n I've never even touched the sort. I've never even touched the continent of Africa. So you've been to Africa and you've yeah. been to Africa. I've never been to Africa. Olivia's been to Africa. Yeah. I'm the only one that's not been to Africa. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I've not even, I've not been to the continent. And it's, for me, it's like, Namib Desert is definitely feels like home stretch. Yeah. But then Cape Town, mate, and Table Mountain and a few of that. Yeah, is, that it is beautiful. That West Coast of South Africa mate, is and stunning. And the party in South Africa. At the yeah, end as well. Hey, come on. Yeah. It's going to be a big, big right. party. Let's see what else we've got. Um, <laughs> When you have to mud wrestle a tiger, have you got a vet on board to potentially save its life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we've got, some, we've got duct tape for the van. Yeah. That might do it. I mean, uh, Olivia is our onboard medic, and she? She'll, She'll yeah. sew the tiger's we, wounds we back together. We renamed her Dr. Johansson. Yeah. Um, when will the first YouTube video be out? Is this a good opportunity to talk roughly about our idea of the content plan? Yeah, let's do it, actually. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, yeah, go on, Stan, you do it, mate. Yeah, I mean, the plan is, as it stands, two or three videos a week. Yeah. Um, to different levels of production. We're going to keep this podcast going whilst we're out there, um, talking more in depth about the things you can't show on YouTube. We're hopefully planning to launch a second channel for the podcast once we've got a few episodes out. We yeah. Sort of build the audience up a little bit. They'll stay on the main channel for a few more episodes and then they'll move over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get all sorts out. There'll be a main Project Africa series documenting the journey, you know, every moment of the journey will be on that series. And then also we'll have separate videos covering all of the things we find along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's all these unbelievable sights and spectacles that nobody really knows about because Africa is so rarely covered in yeah, the yeah, right? Literally. So we'll, we'll find those, we'll bring those stories to you and we'll also just muck about, mukbang. Yeah, man. It's I'm, got to happen. It's one of, I think it's one of the things I'm most excited about is to, to, to dive into all the food. But the good thing is that I'm not fussy. So, you know, whatever comes my way, we'll be going down the neck. To be honest, we won't even know what we're eating half the time. Yeah, mate. I think it's just going to be one of them where it's like, you get what you're fucking giving, lad. Yeah, mate. Just eat it or die. Yeah. Up to you. Yeah. So it's better not to know, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's better not to know. Like it's a mental game and yeah. I'd rather not know. What martial art do you think works best against the lion? <laughs> I'd say jujitsu, mate. Go for the yeah. neck. You're not you're not you're not you're probably you're doing well to knock out a lion, although I kind of, you know, 
Oh, maybe. Rear naked child. Talk, talk me through. What? The, the game plan. The game plan. Right. Anthony sure Joshua is not knocking out a lion, <laughs> mate. No, Russ <laughs> Cookie. Yeah. Russ Cookie. Mate, the Rear game plan with the lion, DJJ. I think, stay nimble, mm-hmm. agile. You know, the lion's the lion, we can telegraph what the lion's gonna do straight up, it's gonna do one of these ones. It's gonna do a jump and a leap and a roar. So predictable. And yeah, mate, like grow up. Okay. Yeah. Um they needs to get something else in his arsenal. So basically if I predict that and then we scoot to the side, go for the neck, rear naked choke, squeeze, hold on for literally dear life. So that that would be the game plan for a lion. I think the neck's your only way out. Maybe you could just out bottle a lion. Like you just have to make it think that it's not worth its while trying to eat you. Yeah. Because you're gonna get you're gonna give it too much of a problem. To be fair, I reckon that is probably the best way. Yeah. To do it. Be right? a bit loud. Yeah, a bit loud. Make loud, yourself bigger. Bit like, noisy. Big, yeah. Big. Loud. Bit like oh, there's a, there's a fucking zebra down the road. I'll just go after that instead because it's less hassle than this yeah. ginger lunatic. I think so, mate. In front of me. That's kind of probably the, the sensible answer. This is a good one. How do you prevent running injuries since each day is so relentless? Mm, that is a good and, question. And great question. the honest answer is. You, you can't really. Um, it will happen. Injuries are 100% going to happen. Big injuries as well. And my thought process on that is, can I move forward? If the answer is yes, then that's what we do. Fuck the injuries. Um, you know, I don't think there's much beyond sort of like broken leg or, you know, maybe snapped Achilles might, might pause me for a moment or two. Or, you know, like, heart attack, maybe. Death. Mm-hmm. Death, potentially, probably stops me, that one. Um, I don't know, you might just crawl out of your grave and get but it I done. I think, you know, also got to play it, you've got to be, assess the overall mission. So if I'm, if I'm six weeks from the finish, fuck it. We just motor on, mm-hmm. no matter what. If I'm six weeks into the project, then we maybe have to think with longevity in mind a little bit more. Yeah. But, you know, overall... I think and injuries are inevitable. It's just get your head down, lad. Drop a few painkillers. Keep the party moving. How did you do it? Aged London. Aged London. Do you know what? I didn't have a, any any severe injury. Like like what I'm saying. Mm. Nothing that actually stopped me running. Um, there's every day I was in a lot of pain. You know, feet were swollen. They were blue, purple. Toenails falling off. You know, couldn't even bend down I was like my my knees were fucked but you know there's there's a difference between something hurting and something actually physically stopping you running mm-hmm. so we'll just play the line we'll just see, see how we go I think I've said this to you boys as well like the first probably the first month or two will very much be like mission don't get injured yeah. um, and then after that I'm hoping that I mean I don't know if the pain gets better or you just get used to it being so shit. I think more the second. Um, but you just kind of get used to the game. This is a good one. I don't actually, <laughs> don't even know if I know the answer to this. Um, what's your rescue arrangement slash contingency if some serious shit goes down? I can answer that question Good, because I can't. <laughs> we're, we've got, well, we're getting, we're in the process of getting, not all of us have got it yet. Um, insurance that, bails you out extraction so, yeah. you get to the nearest hospital and then they extract you via air, air ambulance from any hospital in the world so you know just get an airlift basically yeah easy job i mean I'm, the I'm hard part will be when there isn't a hospital for yeah. two thousand kilometers yeah yeah which there are areas like that um but yeah basically as long as we, you can drag your fucking we have got doctor johansson yeah friends. exactly i think i think basically you know and we've, we've also got a team uh, monitoring intelligence from the UK. Yeah. So that currently there's a coup in Guinea. Um, we can still travel through it at present, but if things change, we'll know about it ahead of time. Have you found funding for the whole project now from Charlie Brooks? Uh, uh, no, no, um, no. We we've, <laughs> Quick we've spoken to. We sp- well, there's been a lot of things floating around and yeah, um, stuff we can't really talk about yeah stuff yes yeah, probably shouldn't talk about but you know like, we are still essentially we are still looking for sponsors yeah, it is still in business. these things cost so much and you know we're, we're coming from very humble beginnings yeah it will get done yeah 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 I'm, I'm still I, we're totally optimistic about the situation 
But that being said, if some if some sponsors, you know, back the trip, they want to see it happen, they like what we're doing, um, we're going to be making loads of content. So it'd be great to collaborate on a few bits and pieces. You know, there's loads of opportunities there. So we'll put a, we'll chuck a link in in the bio with an email. Yeah, uh, Russ at hardgeezer.com. That's it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, get in touch. This this is another side to that though. Yeah, um, which is fundraising side. Yes. Is, again, we can't talk about it in too much detail until it's all confirmed. But there will be a charity element to this run. It will be a waste of opportunity not to. I yeah. Think. Oh man, I mean, the charity has been a huge part of uh, my journey, and obviously, it's it's super worthwhile to try and um, create some impact with a trip like this in a more meaningful way. Mm. So. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll have some more details on that soon. But yeah, there's loads of messages as well from people saying like, "How can we support you?" and and that's a, that's a big way of you know any donations to the charity would be hugely appreciated. For sure. And we'll let you know as soon as it's rolling. We'll let you know. We got another question from uh, Matt Matt Mark. He says, "How are you going to deal with bribery and scams at border crossings?" Ah, uh, yeah. We talked a lot about this. We've talked a lot about this. You can talk endlessly about how you avoid these things, and we have spoken to a lot of, you know, like people that have, have dealt with this in their careers, and they've given us some really, really sound advice. But I think we'll have to just keep our wits about us, especially in, in those in those highlight areas of borders, and like yeah. only speak to people in the in in the in the office. You know, I don't care what what you're saying out here. Let's go and chat in the office yeah. if that's, if yeah, that's we, the game. We've got code words for, for yeah. suspicious. You know, we've got everything in place that you reasonably can put in place. But yeah. again, I, I, the answer to a lot of these questions, I think it's just, we're going to have to just figure it yeah, out. Yeah, and it is. Right? It's made, there isn't a manual for this. you just got to roll with the punches. They've not yeah. written a book on how to... To run across that. Yeah, it's, it's, no, he's gonna write it, yeah. but uh, it's never been done before for a fucking reason. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just we'll just have to see how we go. Do you think you'll ever achieve anything bigger if you complete the Africa Challenge? Well, what's your game? You've got an oh, end game, haven't you? Yeah. Well, the the end game would be pole to pole. I've 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 looked it up already. And it's doable. Bit of swimming involved, but it's all right. Yeah. I, in my opinion, if you're gonna do it, you know, do it for the Americas, mate. You do it through the whole way through the Americas because you can go in the winter from the North Pole to Ushuaia, Argentina, without having to cross a single bit of water. Yeah. If it's if it's frozen, and then, over and then you've yeah. got a few hundred miles of sea between that. The uh, there's the little bit of Antarctica that rolls around to the to pretty close by. It's gonna getting, make the getting, Sahara look comfortable. Though, getting getting, getting myself in a wetsuit, you know, learn to swim, bosh. Love it. That's that's the, end game. that's the end game, yeah. So I mean we'll see fuck me, we'll see how Africa goes first. Yeah. <laughs> might die. Let's do um, that first. But I'm a young man in the game, you know. I've got some life left in me. Yeah. Let's and and I've I've looked that up, that's a marathon every day for two years. Jesus. Source, mate. Source. It's a fair bit. So yeah, um but I mean let's not get too ahead of ourselves, right? Yeah. Love me. We've got to run three hundred and sixty marathons in two hundred and forty days through sixteen different countries and no one's ever done it before. So I should probably just focus on that for the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sweet. Should we should we bounce it there, boys? Yeah. 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 All right. Nice one. Let's um, go. Let's go across that. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for your continued support, and we will see you in the next one. Sweet. Peace out.